Hey everybody, Ryan Gronfen here with Pilot Rhino, and I'm about to do my first fiberglass uh, fair, fairing tip. I don't know what they call it. This is the rudder, not the vertical stabilizer. This is the rudder. And this is the top piece for the rudder. And then the bottom piece is somewhere in this mess. Anyways, over the last couple of days, I've been going very slowly because this is the first one. So, you know, I took my time, I measured. There's a half inch gap. It's hard to see that in there. But between this plate and this, it's a half inch. So I measured a little bit more than the half inch, and then I sanded this down. I just used a block sander with 80 grit sandpaper and then smoothed it out with 600. Um, this one, I was able to get a nice smooth line. Uh, if I can find, yep, the bottom piece, I just had to use some Bondo. Um, so I'm gonna do a little more work, it looks like it dried and cracked or maybe there were two layers there. I'll do a little more work on this one, but I needed a little bit of Bondo to make that nice and smooth there. Uh, but I can't do this piece yet because I'm waiting on the bracket from Vans for my AVO tail light, which again, I don't need because I'm doing zip tips, but I figure I got the light. I might as well do it. But what I wanted to share with you here before I put this in and rivet it is I'm gonna experiment with a couple different methods. I just used a washer. These are number six washers, which are a little big. I went to Lowe's last night and couldn't get washers that were eighth inch, they were out of them. Um, so these are a hair larger, but I tested it right here. Sorry, it's a little mess. I tested it and it, um, it got great contact in there. Now, there's a lot of conversations going on in the Facebook group now about using like a strip of aluminum here, which you could definitely do. Um, this is a trick that I learned back from my remote control days. Now, I'll be honest with you, with the five minute epoxy that I had at home, it didn't stick great. It stuck well enough, a couple popped off and I just put some, some, um, some more five minute epoxy on and let them cure overnight. I might try JB Weld or what we used to do if it was a critical component in RC, which this is not a critical component, but still we would epoxy the washers, then we would run just a strip of fiberglass over it. So I, I don't know what's easier. Um, you can cut a strip of aluminum, you can do whatever you want. This just works for me just because I used to do this and I knew how to do it. And it worked out perfect. I just Clicoed. Um, so I dipped, I dipped the Clico into the, Bayo lube, uh, opened it up a couple times while it was in the lube, and then I put the Clicos in through the washers to hold them on overnight while the epoxy cured. And then I went through and I countersunk the holes, and then now I'm about to rivet them. So you wanna be very careful doing these rivets here. I was able to get my squeezer to do this one, it's tight really tight, but I was able to get the squeezer in there. If not, I was set up and ready to use the pool rivet pop, pool rivet dies. Um, but man, these suck. I mean, they work, they do their job, but they don't self-center. Um, they're just not as good. So I'm glad that I was able to use the squeezer. You just have to be very careful because the male side, yeah, let me show you, the male side of the squeezer <clears throat> Let me try to do this with one hand. It has to go in like this, like that. But you can see the male side is the side that squeezes out. So if you're not very careful because you're, you got the female side here, the male side is going to push down into the hole. So you got to slowly pull the trigger and make sure it lines up because... Look, I mean, punching a hole in here wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. You could fill it with a rivet. But man, when my rudder is done, the last thing I wanna do is punch a hole in the skin 
on like the last step of the rudder. So you just wanna be really careful, take your time, but that's it. So the next video that you see or the next picture you see is going to be of this fully riveted and attached. Again, there's a lot of conversation about using screws here. Some people use number six screws with nut plates. Some people use number four screws. There's arguments online of people that say, all of these should be screwed in uh, in case you have to inspect it or in case you have to do anything. I went back and forth on it. I spoke to my local technical advisor and he's like, dude, there's nothing for you to inspect inside your rudder. Um, maybe there is, maybe there isn't, I don't know, but I, um, I'm riveting them. I'm trying to do as much of the build as per plans. Uh, every modification takes time, adds work. So the original RV10 from 2003 is still flying at Vans. Um, I'm trying to do as much as I can. And if at some point I have to remove this for some reason and drill it out, maybe at that point I'll do um, screws and nut plates. Maybe at that point I'll re-rivet it in. I don't know. The one that I am going to screw in is this one. I'm going to use screws instead of rivets because I'm going to have a go. So this is my vertical stabilizer, the front piece, the big dome piece. I'm going to screw this in because I'm going to have a GoPro mounted up here. So there'll be a mount that uses, I think, these two screws. I'm going to double check that. Um, and then, so not only do I need screws because of that, but then there's going to be wire running through here. So I want to make sure that if the wire breaks or if there's an issue or anything, I can unscrew this and fix the GoPro mount and screw it back on and, and all that. But other than that, I'm trying to stick to the plans as much as possible. So I'll show you what this looks like when it's done. I forgot to film this video while it was still in the garage, but this is it. Uh, I'll click it up or um, rivet it up. Got a nice line. There's a little bit of a gap there, but uh, I, I tried even when I pre-drilled it or when I match drilled it, I just couldn't get that gap to fill. Um, but it's, it's not noticeable. It's the top of the rudder. It'll get painted. So that's done. The, uh, the bottom one I've match drilled and dimpled the skin, but haven't done anything with it yet because I'm waiting on the wires and stuff to come so I can do the light. And then haven't done the rudder yet, like I talked about. I'll do that when I, when I get the, uh, the parts that I need from Vans. Well, anyways, that wraps up that. It's getting late. I'm gonna shut it in for the night. I wanted to just give a quick shout out or a quick reminder to everyone out there that, you know, the community has been so incredible and has helped me so much that I wanna be able to help out anyone out there that needs anything. If it's a quick question, leave it in the comments below. I try to get back to those as quickly as I can. If it's a more detailed question, if you live in the Texas area, you wanna come check out the plane, you wanna help me build, if you want to hop on the phone sometime and chat, you can find me on Facebook. It's probably the best way. Uh, just Ryan Gromfin on Facebook. I don't have a Pilot Rhino Facebook profile set up yet. I might, by the time you're looking at this, you can look for Pilot Rhino. I should just set one up. Uh, or you can go to pilotrhino.com. The website sucks. I haven't done anything with it. I've posted one of my videos. I just, full-time job. Well, I own my own business, um, wife, kid, golf. So the fact that I'm able to build is enough, but keep up with the blog, it's tough. But anyways, there's a contact form. You can shoot me an email directly. You could shoot me a direct message on Facebook. Uh, I'm in the RV10 Facebook group and I'm in the Vans Aircraft Builders Facebook group, so you can just search my name, Ryan Gromfin, G-R-O-M-F-I-N, and again, shoot me a private message. I'd be happy to help out with anything. If you're enjoying these builds and you're thinking of getting your own airplane, my Vans builder number is below. It would be great if you could put that builder number on your kit. If you order your first kit, send me a hundred bucks. It's no big deal, but it's something. Um, and then again, my Patreon page, I haven't really done anything with it, but if you want to go over there and support me, I'd appreciate that as well. The, the Patreon page is below. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.